Hey guys, Ed Bud, and I'm back here in a slightly cold shoe sanctuary. Certainly the mornings have got a little bit crispy now. It's about two or three degrees this morning when I went out for a, a light bop around uh, the typical trail for around three miles. And I did the same run commuting back after work today. So I've been run commuting with a new pack that I bought, the Osprey Daylight Plus. Certainly very light, around about 500 grams and vastly configurable in terms of storage. I went for this running pack mainly due to a recommendation from the Grandmaster Kafuzi. I mentioned to Kafuzi that I wanted to run commute with my MacBook Pro. He thought that the 15 inch model was probably going to be a little bit unwieldy, but he thought that the Daylight Plus will probably be absolutely fine in terms of transporting a 13 inch MacBook Pro, which is kind of my backup model. I managed to pick this one up for about 25 pounds, which I thought was a stupendously good deal. I've noticed they're mainly around about 37 pounds here in the UK. So I'm gonna give you a brief rundown on this running pack today, my initial thoughts on it, and some of the pros and the cons. So my typical run commute is back from work rather than to work as well. Main reason being that the office doesn't really have any sharing facilities for me to use and I don't really wanna sit around smelling all day. So this pack has ample room for a suit, so that includes the jacket and the trousers, additional undergarments, socks and, you know, a casual style coat that I might wear to the office building. I've got to be honest, I was surprised at the sheer volume of stuff that I could get into the main pocket of this bag. It is quite brilliant, really. Coat, hat, socks, shirt, tie, of course. Trousers, now crumpled. Jacket, very crumpled. Hypnobirthing book, Huh? So quite brilliant really the amount of stuff you can get into the main section of the Osprey Daylight Plus. I had no trouble filling it up to capacity and then running at some reasonable paces between about 8 minutes per mile and 8 minutes 30 per mile. So one of my main requirements as I mentioned earlier of this pack was being able to run with a MacBook Pro so I can do some editing on the move. I don't mean actually while I'm running, I mean when I get to my destination, right? Though I tested the 15-inch MacBook Pro in this bag, it was a little bit too snug. That side, the 13-inch MacBook Pro fits absolutely fine without any problems whatsoever. It's really the perfect size to accommodate that machine. Hopefully you can see there, there's like a back segment where you can place the MacBook Pro into there without any issues whatsoever. There's a clip as well, so you can kind of tighten that up to stop it from bouncing around during your run. Something else in here. Ah. Of course, the GoPro. <laughs> There's an upper pocket right at the top here with some more mesh webbing in here. There's a couple of little pockets there. You can fit in some smaller items. I tend to keep charger cables and the headphones in there. I found that things didn't rumble around too much in that upper pocket. These little mesh pockets are quite good. And there's also a clip, I guess, you can hang keys on there or something. That front upper pocket does appear to be waterproof. I got absolutely saturated the other day with the running pack and all of my goodies were inside bone dry. I think it's just ideal size really for little whatchamacallits and thingamajigs. I think one slight gripe I would have perhaps with this bag is I haven't really found any significant use for these mesh panel pieces here. I guess they're intended as sort of bottle holders, but the webbing's just too short really. It's not deep enough. I've noticed a number of other reviewers of this pack as well have mentioned that. I'm sure I can fit some other stuff in there, maybe some headbands or some lighter items. But I think if you had a drinks container that was too narrow or too long, there's danger that it could slip out. Especially if you're listening to your tunes, you're probably never even gonna realize. I think some tightness here or just some sort of deeper webbing really would have made all the difference and made these side sections a lot more usable. I might look at some adaption or some modification to those side panels. I think I'll probably try and get my talented wife, Charlotte, to try and have a go at adapting that so I can utilize those side sections. There is another front stretch pocket here which goes right across the main section of the bag. There's a zip pulley on there and you can fit some kind of thinner and not so deep items. I've put some pens and some other various bits and pieces in there. I would suggest it is quite small and narrow, that sort of front pocket. It's ideal for keys, I suppose. And I guess if you had some wet items as well, gloves or pat or something, you could stick it into that front pocket. There's a little grommet kind of thing at the bottom, which I think will let out some water. So you can keep any sort of wet or damp items away from your other belongings. There's some tightening straps on either side of the bag here and here, which you can use to kind of compress everything together. It's really vital that it enables you to kind of get all the weight a little bit closer to your body. Certainly enables you to run a lot easier than if you just had a standard rucksack without those options. 
So you've got chest and also waist straps on this bag, which are fantastic really, very easily adjustable. Even those chest pieces slide up and down. You can kind of pull on them and kind of raise them up and down dependent on where they are for comfort. Even on now, it feels quite comfortable. It's quite a novel and quite well implemented idea there. It really enables you to adjust the height of those chest straps, get them just right for you. I found the shoulder straps here well positioned, nice and comfortable. Nice and cushioned, everything really I just found very easy to adjust while in motion. The bag just sort of melts away after a while and you kind of forget it's there. I felt the bag actually helped my posture a little bit. It kind of kept me from slouching and promoted Mr. Giraffe legs here to stay more upright and certainly my running benefited from it. The bag does feature a slot here to put a hydration pack in. I believe that it will fit a 20 litre pack. I think I'm right. It is an item I currently have, but I think in the future I would perhaps consider investing in it. Some of my training does feature some longer runs, but it's not something I really need right at the moment. There is a sheet of compressive sponge between this section and your back, so it is quite comfortable on the back. I haven't felt any sort of discomfort or pain whatsoever. I find that back section quite useful to actually put the selfie stick once I finish using it. I'm going to throw some approximate size measurements up onto the screen for you in terms of the different sections of the pack. So very happy with my purchase thus far of the Osprey Daylight Plus. I'll give you some updates on the pack and I as we become a little bit more accustomed to each other. I'm sure we'll be racking up lots of miles together in the near future. I do like the clips on these zippers actually, they're really really easy to use. You can kind of grab them really quickly and it's just a lot easier than a standard metal zipper. If you've got any questions at all on the Osprey Daylight Plus, please place them in the comments below. So it's back to speed work for me tomorrow and part of the rest of the week actually. I've got a couple of speed sessions lined up, I'm looking forward to testing out the Adidas Takumi Sen 6 once again. I've just been watching Kafuzi's review actually of the Adidas Adios 5. I can see a number of similarities between that shoe and this one. Certainly with the implementation of Light Strike here, you haven't got anywhere near as much cushioning in the heel. Some boost here in the front of the shoe, but when you spin it over, you can actually see there's quite a lot of similarities between this and the Adios 5. I'm keen to do a part run in these at some stage and see just what sort of speed I'm capable of all out. Before I go, a quick musical interlude for you. I've dug back into my kind of vinyl collection and recently been listening to this one from Wild Billy Childish and the Buff Medways. This album was called Steady the Buffs. Fantastic picture on the front there. An old war photo with Billy Childish there in his period outfit. I believe this album was endorsed by the Friends of the Buff Medway Fanciers Association. I think the Buff Medway is a type of chicken. This album was released on the Transcopic label, which I think was something to do with Graham Coxon. I believe he kind of ran that label uh, for a while while Blur were on a bit of a hiatus. Certainly it feels as if we're in some troubled times at the moment. Lots of awful things going on in the world with this coronavirus stuff. I um, hope everybody's all right out there. Thinking of that made me think of this song Troubled Mind on this album. That's kind of why I dug it out. Uh, this is very primitive rock and roll, garage style rock. It's more probably more primitive, in fact, than Fred Flintstone himself. Another track I love from this is a song called The Archive from 1959, because I kind of feel as if I am that. Just generally wild and raucous guitar work on here. It's very, very distorted, but very exciting. I do recommend you check out loads of Billy Childish stuff. He's done all sorts of poems, lots of albums. Um, I think he's made loads of pictures and paintings as well. So check him out. There's Billy Childish there in his special military outfit. Really great album this, Study the Buffs. Do go and check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay, that's about all for me for today. Thanks for tuning in and watching through to the end. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down here for notifications of when new videos are launched. Make sure you comment with your questions and share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you. Oh,